In the last section, we successfully fetched album data from our API, but we realized that there is a big fundamental flaw in the timeline of the R app related to the order in which we fetch data and show content in the screen. By the time our data has been fetched, all of our components have already appeared on the screen, which is keeping us from having kind of any opportunity to show the data that we just fetched. So it's an order of operations problem. In this section, we'll figure out the best way for dealing with this issue. The technique we'll use to solve this timeline issue is called component state. State is how React handles changing the content that is shown on the screen. So let's look at a practical example of how this works. This diagram shows the two possible states of our album list component. It either has an empty list of albums, so we get no, no albums to show on the screen whatsoever, you know, we haven't fetched our data yet, or we have some list of albums to show on the screen. So maybe like an array of objects where each album has like a name or something like that. The event that separates these two different states is fetching our data. So we either have data or we do not. In theory, when we have not fetched our data, we have kind of like an empty state or a lack of any albums. So this is just a little bit of the theory behind the term state. So let's pivot a little bit now and talk about how state works with React. With React components, we'll have the same type of migration of state. We will have this kind of empty list of albums and we will have a full list of albums, two different possible states that our component will be in. In React, any time that we change the state of our component, our component will automatically re-render itself to the mobile device's screen, which is exactly the behavior we are looking for. So we are going to, in this section, walk through the process of enabling what is called component level state inside of our album list component. And the goal here is that we are going to use component level state to tell our component, hey, I just fetched a list of albums, here they are, you need to re-render yourself with this new list of data. Okay, so fixing up our component, it's gonna take three steps, exactly three. First, we are going to set some default or initial state for our component. Second, when we fetch our data, we are going to tell our component state to update. And finally, we will make sure that our component makes use of the state. So it actually says like, oh, I've got this kind of state thing I'm going to tweak my render method to make sure that I consume or make use of that state. Just to make sure that I'm really clear here, when I use this word state, this is an actual system that is built into React, so it is not just like a arbitrary or random word. The component base level class here has a bunch of functionality built into it that handles dealing with this kind of state system that I'm referring to. Okay, so three steps here. Uh, let's start with the first, setting up some default or initial state for our component. To set up some default state, we are going to add what is called a class level property. A class level property looks like this. We say just state equals empty object. In the past, uh, well, let me take a quick aside here and say that this state declaration I just added with React has gone through a lot of different iterations, iterations on exactly how you declare state or initialize it. So you might be used to seeing other tutorials where it uses the constructor or other tutorials where it uses a method called get initial state. They're all doing essentially the same thing. They're just saying, hey, this component, when it gets created, has some initial empty state or some like initial base state. Whenever our component is created, it will now have a property called this.state and it will be set to an empty object. And we refer to this as our initial or empty state. So by default, we're saying that inside of our component or kind of like you know, in the context of our component, we're going to have an empty list of albums when we first render our component. So I'm gonna say that I have a albums piece of state and it should start off as an empty list. So inside of my state object, I'm gonna say albums is an empty array. So I've now got an albums piece of state and it's an empty array to start off. So when our component first renders, it will have access to a variable that we can make reference to inside of render right here as this.state.albums and that's gonna return an empty array. Okay, so that's it for step number one. We now have set up some reasonable default or kind of like initial state for our component. Now for step number two, 
Step number two, we need to make sure that after we fetch our data, we take that state and we update our component state. So this step here is gonna be just a little bit tricky, all right? Just a little bit tricky, but we're gonna write out the syntax for it, we're gonna write out the code, and then we'll talk about exactly what's going on with it. So after I fetch my list of albums, which is you know, right in here, this callback function right here, I'm gonna delete the console log, and I'm going to instead replace it with this dot set state. I'm gonna pass in an object with a key of albums and a value of response dot data. So first things first, remember that when we uh, looked at that request in Chrome, when we looked at the console log, the list of albums was available on the response as response.data. So that's exact, that is why I'm using response.data right here. Second off, we are passing an object to this function set state. We are passing an object of albums, pointing at the you know, actual list of albums, because I am updating my albums piece of state. So after I fetch my list of albums, I'm no longer gonna have this.state.albums equal to an empty array, I'm gonna have this.state.albums equal to an array full of objects. Finally, you'll notice that I used a function here called this.setState. So setState is a function that is automatically implemented for us by this component-based class. So we're not going to define setState, we don't have to do anything like that, it's just a function that already exists inside of any of our class-based components. The purpose of setState is to update our component state and say, hey, here's like some new data for the component. We now need to re-render uh, this component with this new data that we have. That's the entire purpose of set state right here. One thing that I wanna point out to you in particular is that using this set state method right here is the only way in which we update our component state. We will never ever say something like uh, this.state equals albums blah, blah, you know, whatever else. We never ever say this.state equals anything. We always modify or update our state by using this.setState. And we'll talk about why that the case of that is um, in the future in a little bit. You will notice that we do kind of break that rule up here where we say state equals blah, blah, blah. The difference there is that this is for initializing, not for modification. So this is like the one time in which we do say state equals something, something. Okay, so the, remember the entire point of this is that we are using component level state to get access to the list of albums and re-render our component whenever we have successfully fetched them. So to just kind of see what the result of adding the state code is, to just kind of you know, figure out what's going on here, inside of my render method, I'm gonna add in a console log of this dot state. Okay, so I'm not gonna say, I've been lecturing long enough, I'm not gonna say anything else, let's just, I'm gonna shut up entirely if, if I can. You know, I will try. Let's flip over to simulator. We'll do our refresh and let's just, let's see what happens, right? Let's just see what happens. So I'll flip over to Chrome, wait for the console log to pick up. Okay, so here's my two console logs. I've got a console log of albums pointing at an empty array. And then I've got a console log of albums with five albums in this list right here. So, hmm, all right. This, you know, this looks interesting. This means that our render method is occurring twice, or is, excuse me, it's running twice, which is definitely towards what we're getting at. Let's take a quick break and review exactly what's going on here.